Hey, everybody, it's Pete Carmasino here at Chaikin Analytics. This is the halftime show on Stock Charts TV. Each and every Monday, we kind of go over a few things. We're looking at what's happening here in the Chaikin system. We're also looking at some sector level situations and uh, just trying to make heads or tails of what's happening out there in the markets this week. So, on tap, we do have a lot of Fed speak coming out. And obviously, in general, I mean, that's always uh, been tumultuous because you've got differences of opinion. You've got some people that are voting, some people are not voting, talking and sort of spewing knowledge or they think it's knowledge about what should or shouldn't be done. And at the end of the day, it is data driven. And I don't think we should need, you know, we need to either, you know, put too much weight into anything that they say. And I say they, meaning the Fed. And again, I coined this phrase a long time ago. Uh, I do hear people repeating it and um, I'm pretty sure I coined it. Either way, um, it was a while ago, 2013, about 10 years now. And I said, you know, it's not what the Fed does. It, it's what they say they're going to do that matters. And that's really where the markets have kind of been pushed and pulled in both directions. And, you know, we find ourselves at levels that we haven't seen since April of 2021. That's exactly two years ago where we are today. So we've been up to big, you know, new highs. We've been down to recent lows of 3,500. And now we find ourselves uh, right in between a couple of those numbers and just trending. And um, the problem is it's a sideways trend, right? So we'll have a couple of up, up days, we'll hit into resistance, we'll roll over, you know, pull back, um, maybe not get to actual support that me that's meaningful, but we get close to some levels and then push higher. And obviously there's a lot of push and pull and there are some folks in the markets that are saying, you know, the bond market is telling us one thing uh, that potentially we might see the Fed cut rates, which is pretty am amazing. Um, and I don't think Fed, uh, Fed Chair Powell is willing or maybe even able to do that. I guess he's able to, but, you know, at the same time, we don't want to see is something um, that's considered a Fed mistake, right? We don't need another one of those. They were uh, late to the party on you know raising rates. Um, it seems that they'll at least have to stay here at some for some foreseeable future, and then obviously you know, potentially roll that back again. It's data driven. No matter what the Fed members say, no matter even what Powell says, right? It's that it's important, but what they eventually do is going to be already dictated by the markets, right? And so the markets today are telling us that they believe that the Fed might cut rates. Now there's a certain gentleman out there um, who you, if you've seen the movie, The Big Short, he was on, uh, quoted at CNBC today, talking about um, what he's doing uh, for his clients. Again, just, it's, just, it's just an anecdotal piece of evidence um, of somebody who's been in the market for quite a long time. And um, at, at best, they basically saying they're raising cash and using treasuries. And his name is Steve Eisman, again, uh, in the famous movie, The Big Short, um, he was the character that kind of saw some things coming and and couldn't believe that this could even happen and wasn't even possible about you know mortgages defaulting and all that other stuff. But he's not talking that talk today. He's just talking about where the market is and kind of what he's seeing. And he thinks that the Fed is um, not going to cut rates and they're going to be a little bit longer. Again, anecdotal evidence. We're going to be data driven too. We have to follow the trends. We got to follow the bonds. Obviously, you have to follow the indexes. And then there are subsectors, right? Your defensives utilities, uh, staples, uh, healthcare versus all of your other types of sectors, the leading sectors being communications and technology right now, which have been rallying, which also says that there is the headwinds of higher rates are being either uh, pulled back or potentially lowered in some way, shape or form. And the reason that's happening is become, is become bond prices are rallying and pushing rates lower. And to be fair, even what Steve Eisman says he's doing by raising cash or buying treasuries is also pushing treasury prices higher. I mean, that's part of the deal when you, when there's more buyers, right? The prices increase, demand, supply, demand uh, lives everywhere. And it's no different in the bond market. And that's going to push rates down if bond prices are rising. The reverse is always true, obviously, as well. We saw that last year when bonds uh, were falling in price, rates were rising and it was, they were rising way ahead of the Fed, right? Remember that. Now they're doing the opposite. So maybe they're early, maybe the bond market's wrong. It's a pretty unusual uh, situation and circumstances we find are in. Now we're talking about the debt level and all these other things. There's just a lot going on. You just gotta be careful, right? Um, you had uh, New York 
uh, state manufacturing survey come out today. Um, and it said that it surged um, in April of 2023. It said um, the headline general business conditions index shot up 35 points to 10.8. New orders and shipments surged. That's right out of the report. I'm reading it. And so, you know, you see that. And then obviously then you start to see uh, where consumers might be slowing down or tapped out or at their credit limits or, you know, retail sales slowing, actually coming in a little bit uh, month over month and, and potentially um, even further. So you, again, you're getting these pieces of data that aren't lining up. And I think that's where a lot of the confusion comes in, but we try to clear it up with our power gauge. We'll look at some names here that have turned bullish. We'll look at some names that have turned bearish in this past weekend uh, we update a lot of these things, but over the past week, we we try to number or rank how many stocks have turned bullish and how many turned have turned bearish. And we'll just dive in and kind of look and see if there's some sort of trend inside of a sector there. We'll also look at the sector view. And uh, with that, we're going to jump into the charts right now. All right. Uh, you guys know I like this chart and um, I kind of pull it up frequently just because to give me sort of an idea and, I, and I'm squeezing it to go back a little further in time here on the ACP platform, which is a really slick platform here at stockcharts.com. Uh, and, um, you know, I had drawn these patterns uh, over a year ago, um, if not more, and it talked about, you know, these potential double shoulders on the right side and kind of forming again and then forming a whole different pattern now. And some folks are looking at this here, this area here is the head, the recent higher in February, this one, this recent high that was lower high back in November as the left shoulder and potentially a right shoulder forming here. Now, I drew some trend lines here. Um, you can call these what you want. There's a bit of a channel that's moving higher. There's a big resistance that's moving lower. And there had been multiple areas where the tops have formed and bottoms, um, you know, where there it had been support a few times, right? And obviously became resistance again. And a lot of that has stayed as resistance over time. And now you see this channel moving higher. We keep bouncing along here. Eventually, we will break out above this. I don't know if the timing is going to be perfect on this, but I do know that these two trend lines crossed right around the specific date that we are here today. I'm not saying it's any kind of super uh, analysis here. What I'm saying is just, it's probably coincidental but here we are um, right around that 41 and if I try to squeeze that 41, call it 4150 to 4170 in that range. And uh, overall, it's just not pointing to anything. But here we are. This is what May, April of last uh, of two years ago, the 15th of April right here, 4122. And today we trade at 4127. So folks, it's just been two years and um, it's kind of a sideways action, right? And so you start to look at, uh, we talked, I talked about this chart before. This is oil. Um, we had, I don't know, I thought it was kind of funny, uh, a bit of a zone called the White House buy zone where it kind of got through there and that should have been support. It wound up being support and then rallying higher, but mostly because of OPEC uh, stepping in and saying they were going to cut barrels. But, you know, that, that kind of happens. Um, something else that's perking up, you're seeing the dollar uh, come off of its highs. And we've noted this back in the, in the past that, you know, when the dollar rolls over, you're going to start to see emerging markets get a little bit more firm. And that's kind of what's happening here in this EEM, uh, the emerging market ETF. And you're just seeing the dollar migrate back to the par level of 100, 100 cents on the dollar here, um, no pun intended. But you look at that correlation, right? It's obviously negative correlated and um, just not seeing the push that we saw when the initial um, sort of low had been formed in the dollar here. And it's kind of just bouncing around support. So I just thought I'd call that out to uh, just to pay attention to. It. Let's jump into uh, what the Chaikin system is talking about right now. Okay, back here at the Chaikin system. Um, I like to pull up this as our sector, uh, the spider sector ETFs. And we rank them initially by, uh, by, by, by rating. <laughs> Sorry, by rating. And um, we got two very bullish here at the top. And lo and behold, guess what they are? Geez, tech-related sectors, XLK, XLC. You can see um, the XLC has sort of been laid to the party. But if I look at the chart, you wouldn't think so. But from a rating standpoint, only five bulls to one bear. It's an excellent ratio. But look at XLK. It's got much more, uh, you know, many more constituents in it. 
but 43 to one is a much more bullish setup. And there's a spy right behind it at 150 to about 76. So at least two to one bulls to bears here uh, on the S and P. And obviously, you know, there's no doubt that it's been performing. You can see year to date up 7.8%, but look at the XLC up 23% year to date. All right. And you look who's in there. I don't know. Facebook, Google, uh, makeup. Oh, geez. Look, you got to count this as Google. So that's 23. So about 45 to 46% of the entire ETF. And you go look at those stocks. Meta's had an incredible year. All right. And so when you start to see leading stocks do that, you know, see what sectors, uh, what sector ETFs that, you know, are going to be affected the most. And obviously that's what we've seen here. We've seen an incredible number here. But if I just looked at uh, Meta, right. And if I pulled up Meta inside this list here that we're going to look at, um, look at the year to date performance on this. I mean, December 30th closed at 118. You're talking at two, 200, 221, uh, up $100 in just a few months is a pretty impressive number, right? But you didn't have to take single stock risk there. You could have bought XLC. If I type that in, obviously, you had a much larger exposure to Meta or Facebook as we know it. And obviously, right around that same time, you saw this move from 48 to about 60 or so, okay? Big moves. So I want to look at the names that turned bearish this week real quick. We've got um, just some names here in biotech. And I'll, this one's actually surging today, but it's interesting. You know, you see it's kind of rolling over. But again, biotech's not my favorite sector just because of things like this, right? Anything can look like it's breaking down and it obviously starts to surge. And then another pharmaceutical catalyst from a bearish perspective, getting breakdowns and any kind of news here will push these you know, particular stocks in an opposite direction. So we always say, don't go by the rating or any technical one or two indicators alone. You got to look at the big picture. There could have been things in those you know, specific companies pipeline that potentially were going to be catalysts for the upside. You just can't use everything um, at your disposal and make that quick decision. You've got to be I'm sorry, you've got to use everything at your disposal to make the decision. You can't just use one or two indicators to say this is a definite, right? Nothing is. And that's kind of the, the things we preach here. Here's another name that we've been talking about now for months, Rivian on the downside, just trending lower, negative relative strength. But these names have been back and forth between neutral and negative, obviously on the bear side. But nothing here, maybe here's a big airline, UAL, that kind of stands out a little bit. You know, I don't know if that's a bearish flag, but it certainly looks like one. And, but that negative relative strength is forming. Let's look at on the positive side here before we break for the day. Okay, uh, on the upside here, uh, what it turned bullish this week, about 220 names, and you're getting some names in the oil and gas area, uh, TNK, these are shippers of oil, obviously popping uh, with good relative strength. Money flow is a little odd here, but you know it was trending lower for a little bit and we turned bullish. It's been fighting back and forth uh, only because it's been above and below the the trend line. Um, here's a name that's, uh, you know, probably a lot of us know already, Solar Edge. A lot of sideways action here, but again, back and forth fighting this trend. We're sideways in the market. We're sideways on stocks like this as well. Uh, let's look at this particular name. I don't know this actual stock off top, but this is another biotech, which is getting more positive here. How about Molson Coors? Tap on a recent relative strength change, and now the rating has caught up uh, with the technicals much more sideways here than you'd like, but these are the things that are happening here. But you can see the names that we're looking at here. I'll just scroll down real quick so you can get a better idea of some of the names that have turned bullish this week. All right, folks, that's all we have for today. As you can tell, this is unscripted. I pull up some names that are popping and they're on the bearish side. I just want you to know that we're looking at these on a day-to-day -day basis. And when the ratings change, we don't have uh, you know, anything that's news related inside of the rating, but this is what happens in the market. You got to pay attention to what's happening in the specific stocks that you're looking at, not just indicators and ratings, but make sure you open the hood or open the lid and look inside, see if there's any kind of future catalyst could have been earnings or anything that's coming out that could potentially change the direction of that stock. I'm Pete Carmasino. We'll see you next week. Take care.